This is The Unicorn by Iris Murdoch, who is one of my very favorite novelists. And this book is kind of an updated Gothic novel. It's set in about the 1960s in a castle in a remote area of Ireland near the coast. Um, and it's got all the normal Iris Murdochian delights, like fantastic humor and interesting philosophy and thrilling plot and great characters. And I wanted to read um, from a uh, breathtaking scene towards the middle of the book. So to set it up a bit, a climactic event has just taken place that went completely haywire. And one of the main characters, a man named Effingham Cooper, um, has kind of stormed off the grounds and is walking it off and remonstrating aloud and thinking about what went wrong when it slowly dawns on him that he doesn't know where he is. He's kind of wandered blindly into the wilderness in the middle of the night. And because it is such a remote location and um, near a dangerous bog, he comes to feel himself at the mercy of nature which is not a feeling that we expect to encounter in the modern world. And as he gets uh, further enmeshed in the situation, an existential event occurs. So I'm going to read a very abridged version of this scene. <clears throat> For the first time, he began to conceive himself in danger. He wondered what to do. But he must not let his imagination frighten him absurdly. The ground was certainly muddy, but had he never walked on mud or wet sand before? Whether he walked or stood, nothing would happen which was worse than wet feet. All the same... The gluey mud was gripping him rather unpleasantly hard. In a sudden panic, he wrenched one foot right out. It was not easy. Walking had now become something else. Effingham, standing on one foot, panted with effort. The other foot had, in the struggle, sunk further in. To get it out, he would need a new foothold. What was he trying to do, anyway? In a panic, and because he could balance no longer, he plunged forward, dragging the other leg out, and was able to take two or three staggering jumps before he found himself stuck again with the bog well over his ankles. His running heartbeats almost stopped his breath. What was the point of these antics? Had he not better stay perfectly still? Nothing could happen to him if he stayed still. At that moment, something seemed to give way under his left foot, as if it had entered some watery chamber, some air bubble of the bog. He lurched, tried to take another step, and fell violently on his side. The ground gave and gurgled all around him. He lifted his head slowly and saw the few stars of the night. Effingham had never confronted death. The confrontation brought with it a new quietness and a new terror. The dark bog seemed empty now, utterly empty. Even the stars were veiled, and Effingham was at the center of a black globe. Why had he never realized that death was the only fact that mattered? Perhaps the only fact there was. If one realized this, one could have lived all one's life in the light. Yet why in the light? And why did it seem now that the dark ball at which he was staring was full of light? 
something had been withdrawn, had slipped away from him, and that something was simply himself. Yet what was left, for something was surely left, something existed still. It came to him with the simplicity of a simple sum. What was left was everything else. All that was not himself. That object which he had never before seen and which he gazed upon now with the passion of a lover. Since he was mortal, he was nothing. And since he was nothing, all that was not himself was filled to the brim with being, and it was from this that the light streamed. He looked and knew with a clarity which was one with the increasing light that with the death of the self, the world becomes quite automatically the object of a perfect love. Mr. Cooper! It was the voice of Dennis Nolan! Dennis! cried Effingham. It was the happiest sound he had ever uttered in his life. Dennis! 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 The tears started into his eyes. His old, unregenerate being was with him again. He would live.